What's up, guys? It's your boy Smalls back with uh, the vault with uh, from Thoughts from the Bench weekly show where we take a look back at some of the best and worst jerseys in sports. With me, as always, ooh, ooh, giving giving us a little one-two. Okay, Benny Buckets, how's it going, bro? I am, I'm here, brother. I'm excited. Best part of my week, uh, and dude, I mean, I am just. I am stoked. The topic is perfect today. Yep. We got a great guest coming in. I'm, I am stoked. I'm oh, yeah. so stoked. So let's just let's bring these guys. Let's bring this guy right in. We got the returning guest, yeah. Yeah. OG sponsor of the vault, back on the show, yeah, baby. Part two. part two. That's right. That's right. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going great, dude. It's been, uh, you know, it's been fun. Life. Life's been uh, kicking in since the last time I was on here. Yeah. Lots of things, you know, lots of things to do. I've been busy, but in a good way. Yeah, there you go. Um, before, so <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything because you don't, you don't look as uh, as sweaty now as you did when you first popped on camera. <laughs> but I was like, dude, this I'm, kid just. I'm dry now. Yeah, yeah, you're a little drier now, but. <laughs> Yeah, I was straight from it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, balling out on some uh, high school girls and net, you know, snat yeah. snatching their souls. Um, but uh, <laughs> so, in uh, soccer, just soccer. Yeah, just soccer. soccer. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Let me clarify. Uh, clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, dude. Let's let's get into it. So, uh, you were saying, yeah, a lot of stuff's happened since we've had you on last. If you could just give the people an update on Marshall Fitness, where, yeah. what you're doing now, you know, where you're at with all that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like first and foremost, I mean, since obviously like, we're, you know, partnered with the podcast, like, you know, Marshall Fitness has been, you know, cruising along. Uh, I'm trying to, I, when was that last episode? When did we do that? I don't even remember. Like, was it? Uh, man, it was probably like February. January, or... February. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I had, I had like a, at the time there, I think I was pretty consistent with what I had going on, like the amount of clients I had. And then recently, like in June, I had, I like doubled, actually almost tripled the amount of clients I had. And um, that's kind of how it seems to go. Like it comes in like waves where I get like a lot of growth and then like a couple of people drop off because it's just, I don't know, not, I mean, it's not like it's anything I did, anything they did. It's just not really, you know, most people don't, some people don't respond to online training, I guess you could say. And so that, that's what I do. I guess I should say that is like, you know, what, what I primarily focus on is online personal training where mm -hmm. I create programs that involve, you know, working out and nutrition. And then I, there's built in accountability where I speak with my clients, you know, once a week and, you know, it's, it's good because I'm not limited by my time and I can take on as many people as I want and it, yep. it makes sense financially and it's actually cheaper to do online training than it is to do in-person training mm -hmm. and I can reach anybody. So I have one client that lives in New York um, and, you know, like he's actually one of my best clients. You know, I, don't, I never see him, but I mean, he's probably had some of the, the best success out of anybody that I've trained, mm -hmm. um, at least in the, in the top two. And um, so, yeah, beyond that, I mean, I'm... I hadn't started with the river hounds, I guess. I mean, that's another thing. And like, I know yeah. that's outside of martial fitness, but like, um, so I, I'm a goalkeeper, one of the goalkeeper coaches for the, the river hounds for the pro team. And this is my first year doing that. And, um, you know, I think back in January or February, I think I had maybe started that conversation, but you know, preseason started in April. And so now I've been in it for, uh, three, four, almost four months now. And I mean, it's good. Like I'm, you know, I get to go and work with the guys every day. I'm not in the office all the time because I'm, I'm kind of like in a part-time position, which I don't, I don't necessarily mind because then I can do partial fitness the other half of the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm on the field every day from nine to nine to one. And then I'm, I'm sometimes there at night when I'm doing academy stuff too and travel all the time. Like this week we're home against Hartford. Next week we're away at Charleston. The week after that we're home and then away at Charlotte. So it's just, it's just one thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a schedule well, up on the wall right, I do, right here. Right here, right here. I've got a, an interjection uh, for that because, Will, you know, obviously we follow you on social media and everything. And, and I got to admit, I know that that was like something that got a, they kind of got kicked. The actual announcement was pretty damn like out of the blue. Like it was there was not a whole lot of like development up till then. I saw your post and I was like, oh, shit, like this is as official as it gets. You know, yeah. like you got thrusted right into it was that something that you kind of like applied for and that you knew coming into it or was that something that they brought to you and were like hey we want you to do this now uh so they came to me um because like that's kind of it's weird but like with within the soccer world like when it comes to college and professional like you really don't get jobs by applying like i've applied for jobs like when i was when i came back from uh westchester like i applied for like coaching jobs in like wyoming and like 
California, like house, like I think it was like UC Riverside or Irvine or something like that. And like, you just don't, you don't hear back from those. And it usually always comes down to like knowing someone that knows somebody else, which is like life too. But yep. in soccer, it seems like to be very exclusive to that. Even and more so. Yeah. yeah. So kind of what happened was like, I came back from Virginia tech and like, I was home for this whole, like this long period of time. And then it was coming around to like, I'd established martial fitness. And then I was still working with the hounds in the academy side. So I was there at night. And then I was actually, I was in talks with Robert Morris cause they just got a new head coach and they were looking for a goalkeeper coach. And I was going to maybe go do that. Um, but then like, I got a call from the assistant, the first assistant with the hounds. And he was like, you know, we have this situation where like, you know, I actually work with my goalkeeper coach from Pitt at the hounds. Like it's a different situation. Like their keeper coach left last year, mid season, and they hired my keeper coach from Pitt. And so he came over after Pitt trained. And so it was a situation where like the first, the, the team would train at 10 and then the goalkeepers would stay after to do goalkeeper training, which sounds like a nightmare to me. I, I couldn't manage that. Mm. So yeah. he basically hired me and him so that whenever he can't be there, I mean, I'm there all the time, but then I also travel. He doesn't travel. We usually like kind of tag team the sessions and, and different stuff like that. So it's almost like it's a, it's a good um, kind of like transition mentorship type thing into like the pro game. Um, and it, it's been it's been fine so far. I mean, it, it's it's something that like those those keepers like they could have one hundred percent been like you know who's who's this guy like this this five yeah. seven goalkeeper that I'm supposed to listen to like yeah. this guy he wasn't a pro you know and like yeah. I get that like I'm I'm very aware of that mm -hmm. but obviously like I'm there for a reason like the head coach wouldn't have considered me if I didn't have something to bring you yeah. know and so I just have to remind myself of that if I ever start to like. You know question myself which everybody does but you know it's like it, it's been it's been good they accepted me very quickly and so they made it really easy for me well and my last question and this is just kind of to, to piggyback on that actually is uh, i feel like you know like you said before that a lot of it is relationship driven and i think now that you have built this you know with with a team like the hounds and that you're working there i mean if you have aspirations to go even further than that th this is a handshake that could lead to another and i think that's awesome and uh not just with coaches but also a relationship that that i wanted to kind of ask you about is uh one of them, especially like when i was well when we were in high school and, and right after graduation this guy was kind of like in his prime of when i got to see him play i'm a big hunter gilstrap fan and i know that you guys are really close and you yeah. do a lot of work with him not only on the field but podcast wise and things like that like i see you guys doing stuff together all the time and he's actually probably one of the only like usl players that i follow like separately you know what i mean and like i or from when he was you know super prevalent like that was the first guy that i went and saw at the riverhounds games and like he was a goalie who like led the team you know what i mean and that and that's you know that's a hard thing to do you need that type of like buffon essence to do things like that and i thought he had that and i see that you guys are tight and that's awesome like from a fan perspective to see that dude he'd be so stoked to hear you compare him to buffon <laughs> 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 i mean uh no, yeah, that's I, that's actually I, I think that's that's so crazy that you mentioned him, and and not only because, I mean, I guess like the just the awareness of like USL soccer is, I mean, it's getting better, but like mm -hmm. for someone to just like drop a name like that is just unexpected for me, I guess. I mean, like yeah. you, you guys played soccer, so I mean, it's not that crazy. Yeah, but I mean, just because like it being it being him, you know, yeah. like I, he was like. I mean, he's been a mentor coach and like, you know, we kind of worked together for a while and then he like kind of stepped away, did his own thing, but we had to do the podcast. And so like, yeah, there's a lot of different um, kind of like things that I've done that he's been involved in and he's helped me in a lot of ways. And so, um, you know, we still talk about, you know, different stuff because I mean, this was literally his job two years ago. You know, he was the pro coach for the for the hounds and stuff. And, um, you know, in, in our, our other podcasts, like, I mean, we just started kicking that off again. And, yep. and so it's, it, it's interesting, you know, like to, to have this perspective in to the pro game now um that i didn't have before and just like how that changes like you know my view on goalkeeping i guess and yep. you know I'll, i think i'll always have a love-hate relationship with it because yeah. it's the dumbest position dumbest decision anyone can make to want to play the position but at the same time it like comes with some really high highs and yep. i think that's why anyone does it yep no it's a definitely the, a thankless position and awesome. it's it's one of the you got you gotta be crazy to do it but like it's a different breed you know you, you goalkeepers are built different like yeah that's but not even you also enough. you also gave like the perfect answer because it, it is it's it's one of those things that 
you know, you, you look at something like that and you're like, man, like, why? You know, why did I ever decide to do this? Yeah. But it's the few moments that you're happy that you did that make up for the rest of it. So I uh, th that was I promise that was my last question before mm -hmm. we jump into things. But I, I had to bring it up because, like I said, like growing up, like that was a guy that I got to see in person, you know, at Highmark and stuff that I was like, dude, like that guy is the shit, you know, and someone that I got to see on a personal level. And I see you guys having that tight relationship playing the same position getting to learn under him i think is just awesome and you getting to kind of take over the reins for the hounds from where he was there is is awesome yep i got one one question about the podcast real quick so you guys interviewed an mls goalie yeah we've interviewed two two i didn't even know there was a second one who's the second one three actually sorry um evan bush Steve Clark and then Kyle Morton. Okay, I, I heard about Steve Clark, but uh, Steve Clark was also yeah, same one that I was on track with. Yeah, yeah. How how were those? Like, was that just wild? Like, it was. Like it was because I think you know, and I, I mean, I'm not going to compare. Like, we know, like we know Kyle personally because he played with the Riverhounds and then mm -hmm. he went and left and went to uh, St. Louis and then he got to the Houston Dynamo. Mm -hmm. So like he's someone that like I knew you know prior obviously so like you know we were boys like we coached together when he was living here and all that he actually lived in Westchester like he grew up there so we had like that kind of connection too but then you know Evan Bush I'd met before in the past like once and then Steve Clark um, that was probably I don't know the highest level goalkeeper I've ever spoken to mm -hmm. and you know, he's just such like a, like a humble guy, you know, like he, and he's very thoughtful. That's the mm -hmm. one thing about him that I, like, I noticed right away is like, he was like very, very, um, like he put a lot of thought into his answers. Like he would like pause for like 30 seconds before we, you know, we'd ask him a question. He'd like really think about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was funny because like him and Hunter's relationship, like when they, they met because Steve Clark was playing for the Michigan Bucks, which was a U.S. uh, what was a PDL team at the time. And Hunter was playing for, I believe, the Cleveland Stars, and they were the USL. They were playing against each other in the Open Cup. And I hope I don't butcher this story, but apparently Hunter like went to clear a ball and miss hit it, and like it went in. And they ended up winning the game still. But then in the handshakes, like Steve Clark was like chirping Hunter, and like this was their first interaction. And Hunter was like, like who is like fuck this guy? Why is he, why is he shit talking me right now? You know? And so then like five years later, they come back around and see each other again. And Steve Clark like goes right up to him and goes, Hey man, like. I'm really sorry about like the last time like we you know we ran into each other like that's not me like i just you know it was heat of the moment like i was i'm just like so competitive and um like hunter you know like had always said like that's been like that really resonated with him and like you know to come back five years later and just mm -hmm. for that to be the first thing he said and so he's like always like really admired steve clark and i mean steve's like the one of the best keepers in the mls right mm -hmm. now too and he's, he's like he's in his prime yep no, that's that's awesome. Big things like it, it was shortly after you did our show for the first time. I was like, holy shit! And that's what sparked it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's <laughs> cool. yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. You could thank us. Yeah, and just yeah. You're welcome. Um, but uh, it, I got one other question. Um, over under on how many pull ups you think I can actually do? Um, I want to put you at fourteen. Oh come on! Do you think that's not? Do you think that's a lot, or that's not a lot? That's not without a lot. stopping. A lot. Without stopping. Yeah, no. I was. Are you saying in one set or total? So let's start with one set and then total. Okay, one set. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna stick with 15, 16. Okay. But then total. I mean, I think if you really put your mind to it, you could. You could do a hundred. I think strict. Like I. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it would take you, but I think you could do it. I mean, you might have to get into sets of like two and three and four maybe but i think yeah. you could hey keep fueling me i don't care I, the doubters are what keep me going yeah <laughs> and smalls for uh for you know me who obviously is in better shape than will i i think i can uh i <laughs> i can uh i can say that my you know i live in a land of unrealistic beliefs right so but this one i don't think is too far-fetched i think you can peel off 30 in a clip i do I, I think you can hit 30. Now, if we're talking full extension, I'll drop that to 24. Got but I think 30. Yeah. I th okay, then, then I'll say 24 full extension. Uh, shout out, Cobes. And and I think I think you can hit it. I, I believe in you. Right. Listen, my max ever in one set is 29. And that yeah. was, was my senior year of college. And I've been trying to get back to it. But it's, I don't know. There's like a wall at like 24, 25. 
Hey, like I said, keep fueling me, man. I, yeah. <laughs> keep, keep going. Um, for people that haven't seen it, uh, March Fitness and the Vault have teamed up, um, which I think we only have three three days left. So, uh, trying to just so you know push more shirts, and I wanted to put my money where my mouth is. So, um, ten pull ups for every uh, shirt sold from now until or from whenever I drop that till the end of the month and 20 bucks towards humane animal rescue which is just something that's kind of important to me but i appreciate you partnering up with us on that i you know it's hopefully gonna be funny watching me do that on camera so can i ask what are what's the number at or is that a secret uh like, it's a secret it's okay. a secret yeah yeah i'm gonna keep that under tight wraps until until the first so fair enough um okay uh let's go ahead and get started um this week's ad read since we have the sponsor on will take it away marshall fitness yeah this week's topic is brought to you by marshall fitness which is me i'm will marshall owner of marshall fitness uh yeah um this is your go-to source for online personal training uh nutrition i do programming um kind of an all-encompassing program that um offers you support monthly in order to um, you know reach your fitness goals, so I have, I have some clients that want to gain weight, some that want to lose weight, some that want to get more shredded, some that want to get more bulky. Whatever, I mean, it's all customizable based on what you have available to you. Whether it's you're going to Planet Fitness, LA Fitness, uh, Marshall Fitness, which was my garage gym, that's how where the name comes from. And so, I mean, I have some people that send me a list of equipment, and they're like, "Hey, this is what I'm working with," and I'm like, "All right, I'll write the program for that. Three, four, five days a week doesn't matter." Um, and uh, you know, yeah, like I mean, I've had I've had a lot of successful clients, and. Um, I'm uh, happy to be part of the vault. And the, and the best time to start is now. <laughs> Just going to throw that in there. There you go. Um, all right, fellas. Uh, this week's topic brought to you by the Marshall Wind Marshall Fitness um, Olympics. We're doing, I mean, obviously we're right in the thick of the Olympics, which we're right in the heat of it. Yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool time in sports in sports cuz you definitely see a lot of stuff that you don't normally see on a regular basis. Um and like you throw some national pride in there too. I, I usually get super into the Olympics, but this is the first time that I'm not a college student or younger watching the Olympics. Yeah. I haven't really been able to watch that much unfortunately. And, and there's just something weird about this year. I think too with like all the the COVID stuff leading into it. And like Tokyo really didn't do a great job branding themselves this year for the Olympics either. So, I mean, I still, I love watching the games, uh, summer and winter Olympics. I mean, just because it is, it's you compete for your country and you get to see a lot of sports that you typically would not see on a regular basis. So mm-hmm. I think it is cool to kind of tap in, not just in your nationality, but, but learn more and, and watch some shit that you probably would only have the tolerance to watch once every four years, but like it's worth it during the olympics Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. i gotta be real with you guys i never watched the olympics like i don't know why i should i definitely should really yeah i never i mean i think this year is maybe a little different because i don't live at home anymore and we don't have cable and like yeah i could probably watch it on my laptop or whatever but like it's just like i see the different things like i saw like you know surfing was recently and then like skateboarding i think we took like bronze um which that would have been sick. I, I kind of wish I would have watched that. But like, yeah. I don't, like, Olympic soccer, I don't understand it at all. Like, I don't know how you even make it to the Olympics in soccer. Which is a good point. I actually don't know either. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because it's not the national team. No. It's yeah. Well, no. It's, it's like the U21 no, like, plus like five players that can be over 21. Like, and like, that's something that I was always like, that's too confusing. I'm not even going to think about it. You know, like, yeah. Um, all right. If you depict. I'm gonna go to both of you guys, Benny. You you first. Winter or summer? Winter Olympics. Yep. Will, what you it, got? Ah, uh, oh, probably winter. I think I like watching like the X Games stuff more than, than mm-hmm. anything else. So like, I mean, if you got you know the snowboarding and the, like the half yeah. pipe. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, you sound like a real real border over there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the half pipe. Um the uh no, winter's I think winter's it for me. Summer's cool, like there's some good ones Dude. in summer, but like the winter love snowboarding just... uh what's it called? The, the there's a certain type of skiing. Um it's Good like fun. a weird word in front. So slalom, um, there's um Yeah, the slalom skiing, biathlon. shit like that. You biathlon. You got, 
uh, bobsledding, yeah, um, uh, curling for Christ's sake. Oh, I mean, curling. it is fucking electric. Sure. So for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there are some there, and like I think Will, you said biathlon. That's dude. That's a wild sport. You're it on is. skis, yeah. and then you like shoot a gun, like. Yeah. It's so weird because like there's something to that you know and it's like the weirdest combination but when you really think about it like how exhausting like cross-country skiing is and it then is. you have to manage to get your heart rate back down to then look through a scope and like shoot something far away like that is pretty crazy when it's you think crazy. about it it's absurd like oh i like how do you come first of all how do you come up with that sport that has to be one of the sports that was like it was like a something that people had to do back in the day or something yeah. like you know yeah. like how do you come up with that like that's a that's a yeah. wild thing to come up with as a as an olympic yeah. sport but it's an elk through the mountains or something and just yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah that's the only complication well, right hey, speaking of things that are wild that we're going to see in the olympics some of our picks are are part of that for yeah. sure but they're like just so undeniably mesmerizing that you're like we we got to put it on so yeah. for the disclaimer yes this is the olympics edition but these are looks that were worn by people they could either be opening ceremony mm -hmm. or uniforms that are worn during the events or things like that but uh yeah we can jump in boy. yeah let's jump into it benny who you got first this one's awesome all right so this is the mexican ski team it, his name was huberto von holen or some, some shit like that he was the only mexican olympian sent to the winter olympics that year he was the only one he showed up he did the walk by himself whole nine yards and this guy decided hey i'm gonna bomb down the hill you know doing these crazy ski tricks and shit and i'm gonna do it wearing the most stereotypical thing i could find and he wore a ski suit that was the uh, matador <laughs> jacket and pants put into like you know ski gear which i think is awesome it is innovative it's funny it's topical it kind of hints at you know his background but he didn't do like the flag or anything he did something that most people would make a joke about and the matador is a sign of toughness obviously in that culture so him being able to be the only person carrying the weight of the olympics on his shoulders for his entire country and do it at the winter olympics and uh by himself in an event that is typically pretty hard and looking like that is just awesome to me yeah some it's a, that's it takes a lot of gut well it it shows that like this guy's i don't want to say that he doesn't give a fuck but it's more like hey like i'm here i'm just gonna have a good time with it like it's a bold watch move. me yeah exactly watch me like no fear. yeah no yeah. fear <laughs> Um, I think Will. I think one of your picks is actually another another group of Mexican skiers. It is. So, so we have a few repeats on. Oh on shit! Episode, okay. So. Not crazy. See, well, like, well, I'm unaware of any of your picks. Just so you know, like I did oh, not really? know any of yours until we show them tonight. See, like I I noticed in like just right now that how like these outfits and I like I wonder who like what brand makes them like you know like but they're so customizable like i mean the one that i picked is crazy like the designs like i mean i don't know i just wouldn't think that like skiers suits are something that you can get so creative <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and i figure i mean i i would assume that these people go to whatever company or a store or whatever and be like look man this is for the fucking olympics show me what you got you know yeah. like United States is polo, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, like this. This may be the only time I ever get to do this. Give me something nuts, yeah. you know. So, uh, I I love the originality of it, and I love that there was like no shame in it. Dude just showed up and balled out. I don't think he got a medal. I'll be honest, but um, looking at him, this was enough for me to like. I remember you. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Uh, big big fan of this guy so yeah also i just looked at his last name i don't think this is not a mexican last name he must have changed it to something swiss like von, it's von like, hohen lowey hohen low yeah or something like that yeah it's not a well, it's it's ridiculous is yeah. what it is it's, but it's awesome yeah uh, props to this guy all right will what ah. you got dude so looking at this like i don't know what you guys are thinking but my first thought is frozen from the yeah. incredibles <laughs> like, hell yeah dude. i mean that's probably unintentional i bet the people of kazakhstan have never seen the incredibles but imagine 
like getting to this point and like that's your uniform and you get to fly around the ice like frozen like that i mean it's 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 almost too perfect they had to know they had to know you know like even the glasses like it looks <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even see <laughs> but i mean like i think <laughs> speed skating's crazy first of all because they go so fast mm -hmm. and it's actually kind of like significantly dangerous you know yeah. oh dude, and, it's super dangerous yeah, super like, dangerous if you told me that that was going to be my suit and i got to fly around the ice like frozen for however long like i'm winning yeah yeah well i do think so sh this looks like the long track speed skating the short track speed skating is fucking bonkers like that shit yeah. is wild it's like a whole f like seven skaters will just like fly against the wall and then the last guy will cross and win the gold like which has happened um but like <laughs> this is Frozone for sure like it, it's a cool color too also never would have thought and this is just me and my ignorance i never would have thought that kazakhstan would have a speed skater in the olympics but hey i mean yeah i, mean, I, I don't i don't know anything is possible is that where borat's from <laughs> yes the, I, it, that actually is borat yeah. that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was by everybody that and eyes like just <laughs> whipping around the rink that guy yells every lap yeah uh <laughs> kind of like how this guy has like pit vipers on too like i didn't know that that was a thing um but no that's a that's a great first pick to start us off i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with a little more traditional one of my first one um jamaican track team usain bolt obviously probably one of the most recognizable olympians of all time at this point um but i mean this guy he won eight olympic golds went to three olympics he, ended up being like a pro soccer player in australia for a short period of time so that just shows his athletic you know athleticism um right out anyway. for the nfl as well. yeah exactly and like and, and like do the jamaica track uniforms are just kind of they're iconic you know they're just they're you know it you know what it is when you see it and like i don't know what it, he looks fast in this i don't know what it is but like <laughs> he just looks even faster than he obviously already is because he i was gonna say i mean record ever but I, I think it helps that he is just usain bolt and i mean honestly what i, I don't know if that is his natural name and i'm not gonna question it but i mean what a fucking coincidence that the fastest man on the planet's last name is bolt yeah. um but dude it i feel like this was kind of one of those uniforms where like you kind of always knew the jamaican colors even before he was there yeah. and this was probably like their cleanest look and they were like hey we potentially have the greatest freak speed related athlete ever uh let's put him in something cool and for a track outfit or uniform whatever the hell yeah it's not bad yeah he was also one of the cockiest reasonably cocky like he was he was cocky but he had every right to be sure oh yeah it's like oh this guy's saying he's the best in the world well he is <laughs> you know like what are you gonna tell the best ever you know yeah. so i'm gonna be a, a fucking nerd here and, and mention that like so there's actually a thing and i read about this a couple years ago look at my my big bookshelf behind me uh but uh there's a it's like some level of like determinism i don't it, it's weird i don't know if it's actually grained in anything but there's like apparently this like phenomenon where like you can find people across society or whatever that have like last names that eventually become like that plays into like what they end up doing yeah it's like very common it's super weird and yeah i mean like you said i mean we don't know i don't know if that's his real name or not but i mean if it is like just how odd yeah it's a self-fulfilling prophecy you know like yeah. he just became fucking that was very good yeah i know right I like hey that. Will's not well, the only learning man on this show you know <laughs> i also went to call the house of learned doctors <laughs> um but yeah uh also one of the one of the best sports center commercials ever was him just clocking in and clocking out 9.6 seconds later just all time um all right ben after you uh pour up what you got for this one this was an interesting pick i want to see where you go with this one okay so everybody i would like to introduce you to dick button <laughs> um, or I'm sorry, Dick Button is this guy's name. You can look him up for real. Uh, I, I wanted to throw this back, uh, not only because he has potentially the best Olympic name in the history of sports, but um, I mean, Dick Button, that is the best shit ever. Uh, but anyway, 
I wanted to, you know, give a little nostalgia, give you kids a, a nice little lesson on what pictures look like before color really popped onto the scene. Okay. This guy was not wearing a spandex suit to be a figure skater. Th this guy was, was not wearing a frilly shirt. He was wearing a goddamn sweater and his dad's pants that he got gifted to him and skating in front of what looks like an apartment complex at the Olympics, okay? I mean, th this takes guts and this is a guy just doing what he loves. And also, if you see the sweater, like the top row of whatever that is, I think those, I'm not kidding, are like hard candies. Like that's what it's supposed to look like with the plastic like twist shit on the end. I mean, just just the style and the panache and the boldness that he had to do. I'm pretty sure those are pleated pants. I mean, this dude went out there like he was going to meet his, the, the girl he was courting family and meet her father who was a war veteran and uh, they were going out to dinner during the holidays and he was like hey we'll also check this shit out and he did a bunch of crazy cool figure skating things I think this is an all time look from an all time name with Dick Button and I'm very proud to present this here today oh my god Dick Button fire it up Come on. <laughs> what a fucking legend, dude. Like, Could you imagine? Like like back in the day, you hear that old like crackle announcement and you're like, Dick Button with the parade. You know, like, and you're like, oh my God, he's doing it. Uh, Charlie's, look at him. He does look like he's about to go to a Christmas party. Like, without yeah. a doubt. Like, he, he's definitely like, this is not. Like, he should be fashioning like a glass of eggnog while doing <laughs> this routine. Yeah. For sure. You could probably Photoshop it right into his hand right there. It's a perfect picture for it. Yeah. I'm, wow. Yeah, that might be the the vault Christmas card right there. Big button. But, <laughs> yeah, and us and us in Christmas sweaters are like cheersing him. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Dick Button. Um, Shout out Dick Button. Dick might Dick Button might be the new Neville South Hall. Who knows? Uh, oh, yeah. oh. dude, I. It. Hey, you know what? Neville Southall, I think, could rock the fuck out of this same outfit. I'm pretty sure he has, just with the goalie yeah. jersey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. All right. Will, what you got for your second one? Oh, dude, how fly is this? Like, so here's the thing. When I looked for uh, these, these outfits, like, initially, Google's not super helpful, right? And, um, like, I don't know why. It's just, like, I, I got a lot of, like, bland ones, and then... You know, once I opened it up to like opening ceremony and mm -hmm. uh, like also like jerseys, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, like, really got easier. And like these dudes, like so this is the curling, this is the curling team. And I mean, the suits are insane, right? Like the pattern is crazy. But then it's just the guy that does it for me is the one in the middle because he knows, he knows that curling is hilarious, right? He knows that what they do is funny. But. <laughs> He's so serious about it at the same time. You know what I mean? It's like, he's like, I'm going to take this serious because it's funny. But he's still out there trying to catch a dub. And like, it's just like, it's just the level of self-awareness, you know? Like, it's like, I, I feel like I'd be doing the same thing. And then like, they're all, they're like models too. I mean, like, the, I, I guess like the back two look like they're just stand-ins. Like, they don't even look like they really belong there. This they looks just, like in sync. Yeah, it's Norwegian in sync. The N stands for the N stands for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <no. laughs> oh. Hey, what really kills me though is this does look like it's old, but it's mm -hmm. fucking not it's even 2018. Years. Yeah. Like it that's that's what does me in is originally like I didn't even read the year i was like oh like this is an 80s picture and then i looked at it and i was like oh my god this is like super recent like these guys are probably going to compete again the same guys next year <laughs> so i mean that is that is wild to me but i do i love it this is great and especially an underrated detail the t-shirts underneath the blazers yeah very very classic george michael -y move and i'm a big <laughs> fan yeah yeah no it it's like it's like Norwegian. It, it looks like these guys went to like a shop down in Miami, down in the seventies, except in Norway. You know, like th these are like just those weird, weird ass tuxes. Like I don't even know what to call this. Like this is it. What do you? What pattern? What pattern is this? Are either Are either of you familiar with the company Shinesty? Yes, Shinesty. No. Okay. Th this is what you would find on there. For those who don't know, I had once ordered a Christmas suit off of Shinesty that, that wow. is literally it's a jacket and pants and a tie, 
and uh and they come with different patterns or whatever but they're usually outlandish and this is something that i feel like you would find on shyness feet so, so okay yeah he, oh, here we go go to the suit smalls so that's just an alabama one but i want to find i want to find a good one yeah like it's like rattlesnake tux you got like yeah no this is a wild brand right here i've seen yeah this. but this is regardless like you guys get the picture this is something that i could see featured on there yeah. and, and well i'll be honest i clearly must have been using the wrong google search like you said and had to play with some things because i did not find this but if i did definitely would have made my list too so big big fan of this pick here dude yep no absolutely um it's funny that you picked this one because that's going to lead me into my next pick perfect Let's also go! the Norwegian curling team <laughs> um so this is just in 2014 um so the i i did some research on these guys they were apparently um supposed to they were like a gold medal favorite i guess they are year in year out but like the story is in the 2010 games um they didn't want to just wear their normal black pants so they kind of went against the grain and just the team did it on their own they went ahead and ordered specially made golf pants that john daly also wore and they've just stuck with it ever since hell yeah and like they grip it rip it sip it buddy that's exactly that's the way they do it and especially with them little rubber brooms and yeah. shit go dude norwegian curling team you guys have have turned me into a fan now yeah yeah well it, i think curling athletes curlers i don't know what the what the name would be curlers I Curlers? guess it, that sounds. Right. I don't know. I think they <laughs> they have a reputation for being like the life of the party, like at every curling. Olympics. Like the Canadian <laughs> curling team is like known for just going. They go on benders when they go to the games. Like, I think we should start referring to them as curling tents. <laughs> I think that's more official and, and it fits their craft. Yep. Um, dude, uh, curling. I'll admit. I still really don't understand it, but it is awesome. I like and it's mainly it it is entertaining to watch because of the guys, like mm -hmm. because of the athletes. Like the the people like you see them legit like all I see is you just squeegee the hell out of your floor basically. And I mean they turn around to each other like yeah! I mean the electricity that they bring, like it's genuinely one of my favorite things to watch. Not because I like the game, but because the people are so goddamn entertaining. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, the the Winter Olympics are next year, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or next winter. I now am gonna root for the Norwegians at this point mm -hmm. because their Curlingtons are apparently bringing the heat every goddamn Olympics. Yep. So, yeah, we have to. Yep. this point despite the fact that this guy looks like your 70s neighbor that you know is a swinger this is kind of fire <laughs> hey you want to come meet my wife no thanks man <laughs> <laughs> all right um ben let's move oh man i love this i i almost i was gonna put this in as an honorable mention but i'm glad you picked it jesus count it <laughs> 1972 Look at this shit. Look <laughs> at it. This dude is dressed like a 70s pimp. I don't know how they work it out in Canada. I assume they're like, uh, hey, dear, you want to go uh, do that guy for some money? Hey, you know, like uh, that's what this guy embodies to me. And the fact that these women are in the background and they have like these little knit caps is hilarious. The hats are what sends me is because with this like giant i don't know would you call it a fedora or, or what uh, what technically is that it it kind of looks like a fedora a safari hat and a pimp hat all had sex and they made that hat um but like the three-piece suit with their like red master's jacket that they have on and then this like undershirt that's like kind of looks like valentine's day theme but it's actually i'm pretty sure a red maple leaf all over there with like the the blue vest you know and i i assume maybe even a cummerbund beneath that uh their color scheme impeccable the red white and blue but they were like hey america we're gonna look even more ridiculous in red white and blue this year check this shit out uh i liked that the cuffs the jacket are are actually being overlapped by their undershirt their their uh hints 
throughout the entire uniform is awesome and that they were like hey this is gonna be our first impression on the public at the olympics this is going to be their first view of us as the games are kicking off and you know like the opening ceremony that's a big deal mm -hmm. especially like in past years like that they say that the opening ceremony gets more views than any olympic event so everyone's watching that shit and they were like all right time to razzle dazzle and i mean they just they went for it they full sent and i love this shit this is this is one of my favorites hands down mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the feather and the hat, to be honest. Yeah. Like, is that is that what that is? Like, that is that, right? That's not in the crowd. No, it's a feather. Dude, that's just, yeah. like, that's such a key detail. Yeah. That and, like, the, you know, the sleeves coming back over the, the mm. blazer. But, like, yeah, man, like. What? <sighs> Canada is such a fucking ridiculous country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a silly country. <laughs> Dude, if, if I had to embody the phrase, strut your stuff, this is the picture I'm throwing out there. Like this guy embodied the term like, hey, let's go out there and strut our stuff. You know, like that is this dude. And like I said, don't sleep on the women. The knit caps are awesome. So yeah. I think like, like all together, I mean, just the, I mean, I gotta, I gotta tip the cap to the Canadian Olympic team in the seventies because this was amazing. On unreal like i saw this one and i thought about putting it in i was gonna have like i said i was gonna have it at the end but i'm so glad someone picked this this is you you knew i had to pick it up fucking canada man <laughs> canada. what a silly country <laughs> uh all right uh, dude how sick are these dude? i like i love this like not even in a sense of like i feel like i can't even I don't know i can't even make it funny because it's just so cool like yeah. like i was saying before about the last like uh like the, the mexican skier like just like how creative and like so i know uh smalls do you have any tattoos not yet no benny i know you have tattoos right you have a sleeve yeah i'm covered yeah right i only have so i only have three i have like two that are visible but i know that like these what are these things called again these skulls they're sugar skulls all right and like those are like big for like I mean, people get them tatted all the time. And like, that's kind of what I thought of because you can, obviously they're so detailed and you can make them like kind of as like yours, I guess you could say. And like, obviously there's all the same, but like, I mean, what a, I guess like a representation of like Mexico's culture. Like, you know, like, I mean, it's just like, if you're going to go and represent, that's the way to do it. Because yeah. now I'm sure some people don't even know what those are. And they're just like, oh, sick. They have skulls on their, on their uniform. But like, I mean, if you if you're aware of that, like that's like so sweet. Yep, Dia oh, de dude, los I, I think, Yeah. I uh, yeah. Did you guys know that Smalls took Spanish in high school? Me neither. Spanish three. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> I took French. But uh, mm, you so nerd. To, you fucking nerd. To, to me, I think uh, it is cool because, like you said, like I am going to side with anybody that involves their culture in one, and that's something we even talk about that with like, uh, like professional usa teams like like i mean even like hockey or basketball or whatever like things that incorporate the culture of the city they're in but especially when it's for your country and, it, and it's on the olympic stage uh i mean i love this i love that they stuck to the roots and it was outgoing but it kind of looked clean so dude i mean i'm i'm all on board with this pick so fresh yep yeah, no it's i mean yeah it doesn't get much better than this like this is as good as it gets really um all right, I'm going to end it on this one. I mean, again, it's nothing wild, but it had to be mentioned. Dream Team USA Basketball 92, probably one of the greatest teams of any sort literally ever assembled. The greatest practices behind closed doors, apparently, that ever occurred. Like, these guys were superstars across the globe before they even played, and they just blew away the competition. And, I mean kind of felt bad for christian leitner because like you know that he didn't really didn't really do much after this but you know the rest of the team is just what a fucking group of legends right here i mean this is i mean this is the best and, and there's gonna be a lot of people want to cover my throat for this um but the best olympic team that america has ever produced in any sport as far as i'm concerned yeah. because this was also the first year that like the NBA really took over the Olympic team. And not only was it filled with a bunch of NBA players, it was filled with the best NBA players. Mm -hmm. Like 
the best, the cream of the crop, and they fucking cruised. And I mean, this is just arguably one of the best Olympic teams, period, of all time. I mean, that's that's in the world, let alone in American history. Mm-hmm. Yo, have you guys seen the new Space Jam? Not yet. I'm not yet. Don't spoil it. I heard it sucks, but I have don't seen- don't spoil it. Okay. Seen, I'm just sitting here looking at Charles Barkley and I'm like, that reminds me of Space Jam. Yeah. So I <laughs> Yeah. No, I've heard that it's good, but we but our generation wouldn't like it. Like it's made for kids today, is how that's, Derek's well, and, and that's kinda how like original Space Jam was. Like yeah. I feel like if, if the first Space Jam came out now, like we can watch it now and still have fond memories of it because it's like nostalgic, but I feel like if the OG Space Jam came out today, I'd be like, ah, that was kinda whack. Mm-hmm. You know, but it, but it's still one of my favorite movies all the time because of when I saw it. You yeah. know, when I was a kid, I was like, "Oh, this is the shit." Yep. Yeah. But yeah. Smalls, great pick and clean, simple uniforms. They didn't have to overdo it because they were like, "You know what? We're American. We're about to kick your ass." Yep. So yep. we're gonna keep it nice, clean, and simple, and get the fuck out of here with our gold medals. Thank you very much. Yep. You know, yep. it was straightforward. Yep. No, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. My one of my best friends in and back at Penn State actually had a John Stockton USA basketball jersey. It was so nice. Like it was it was just one of those that like I asked him to wear it a few times because it was just it was just that cool. Um so we're gonna go over to honorable mentions. I'd have had to throw in Michael Phelps and the USA swim team here. I don't know are they aren't speed i guess they are speedo brand i guess they're a speedo brand it's just like it's like a leotardo yeah I, it's uh <laughs> I, I, don't know. I, I don't know how to classify it but i like that they went with a darker theme and still incorporated the flag um yeah yep. and then hey i gotta go with uh anybody who's an office fan gold face to the right in the in the top right corner um you know he's kind of got the opposite where it's a gold body but still this i immediately made me think of threat level midnight jim helper is uh his golden face uh but this was a usa speed skater in 1980 uh at the olympics in, in the winter uh so this guy was american and he said no joke he said i am the gold standard and so he wore a gold suit i don't think he got a medal um i i really don't <laughs> think he placed but it was funny like the boldness and the fact that he's american adds to it and he wore a full gold suit hoping to get a gold medal and i think he came in like fucking six or seven <laughs> but uh i mean just a great story though i had to throw him in there that's awesome um and then i had to throw in miracle on ice still one of my one of my favorite sports movies probably one of the best sports movies ever like yeah it's i mean just an iconic jersey great story beating beating the fucking ruskies what more can you ask for um all right guys great episode um will appreciate you coming on as always i'm so happy to have you again man dude yeah i i enjoy this man this is fun any any time yeah uh Thanks again for being the sponsor of this shit show. Likewise, here. Hey, hey you you help keep our wheels turning, man. We appreciate you. Yep. I appreciate you guys. Um all right, a few things. Um guys, if if you if you like these episodes, go subscribe to the uh, YouTube page. Um also go give Will a follow. Will where can everyone find you? Uh Instagram at Will Marshall underscore one. Facebook Will Marshall. I don't know, that's a weird one. I, I figured it out somehow. And then uh, my website's marshallfitness.shop. Perfect. Yeah, I'm repping today. He's repping. Oh, shirts in the game, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, dude, it's soft. I'm not going to lie. Hey, go go get some of these. These are these are soft. Um, I, I will admit my own fault. I got to go get one. I'm so sorry. I've, I've kind of fallen off the wagon, but I'll get there. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be anyway, like, oh, missing out. These are so soft. Yeah. Hey, well, seriously, man, as always, very happy to have you back on. Thanks again for everything, bro. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Seriously. Yep. Appreciate it, guys. All right, this has been the Vault Weekly Show, where we take a look back at some of the best and worst jerseys in sports. Um, Episodes drop every Friday. Boys, appreciate it. Benny, cheers. Will, I saw that Gatorade bottle. (laughs) There you go. Health guy over here. Health guy.